Chris and Ken here at IPD. Lately we've been releasing a whole bunch of products that are surrounding our Future Stage 3 kit. Some of these products actually mesh well with cars that do not have a full Stage 3 install. One of those products is our new external bypass valve. A lot of people don't really understand if they're not really engaged in the forums and the performance world what an external bypass valve does for you and how this meshes with your stock turbo. So we're going to cover that today. Ken and I are going to head over to the bench where we've got a couple turbos set out for you. We're going to look at the factory compressor bypass valves and how an HD diverter valve is going to serve you and your factory turbocharger. These are the two primary designs of turbos that we see on most of the Volvos that we're working with these days. This is a Mitsubishi design turbo, TDO series. This is a Triple K24, which is on the R's and some of the newer T5 models. This is really the basis of how most of these cars work and we can demonstrate these bypass valves on these two units. The primary function of a bypass valve is to take that surge that most people would think of as a blow-off valve in racing applications and recycle it without dumping it outside the vehicle so that you maintain some kind of running quality with the car. In this case, the turbo makes the pressure where it exits here. It's high pressure area right back in here and the the boost needs to escape from this area and exit back out so that it comes back out pre-turbocharger where your inlet pipe is to avoid that surge. Same thing happens on the triple K's except in this case the boost comes out through the center hole here and exits to the outside which then comes over to the inlet of the turbo right here. They use two totally different styles of bypass valve for this. On the Mitsubishi cars obviously big flat plate there this is the piece that goes on it and it covers that and then the bypass valve opens and closes like that to operate based on vacuum. Now a couple of shortcomings you'll see here. One is just that flow is not very good through here. The other is that the ridge that makes the seal here on this, you can see where it's left a wear mark on this turbo, is actually hard plastic and this is hard aluminum and so you're never really going to get a good seal between the two surfaces and you'll get a lot of boost leakage. Okay, on the triple K turbos, the bypass function is primarily the same. It's a different structure. This has kind of a plunger piston item, which does have a rubber coating on it, which makes it a little better than the Mitsubishi design, that pushes down and rests against this inner seat. And then when it pulls back, it allows it to bypass. This is guided a little bit by the lid, which has a guide in it, but even then, you can see that this tips quite a bit, side to side, and it has a lot of movement in it. On either of these designs, what the bypass valve is supposed to do is that you have a boost target you're trying to hit and it needs to maintain that target completely. When you hit shift points, when there's a ebb or flow in your boost, the bypass valve is supposed to open, allow your charge air pressure to go past, back into your intake, and then close as soon as you reach back to your target boost so that you don't end up with the boost spiking up too high at a shift point, then pulling back too far, and then taking a moment to creep back up to your target boost. The more leakage you have through here or through here, the more that that spike is going to go up, pull back too far, and then take a moment to come back to your target. Another factor to consider, since neither of these bypass valves actually seal very well due to a couple of different issues, your turbo has to work harder to hit your boost target. So if you're reaching for a target of say 15 psi, it will actually have to spin even faster to try and reach that 15 psi because some of the boost is actually being accidentally wasted through your bypass valve while you're trying to actually make boost. Here's some of the obvious inefficiencies you'll see on these. This flat face of this piston is not actually indexed in any way and even though there is a spring pressing down on it, it still has the ability to flex around and move side to side which can cause it to leak. Same thing is true over here on the Mitsubishi Turbo. This flat face is not really indexed. And in fact, you can see in the wear line here on this one that it wasn't even resting centered around the center hole of this. And it can move around and it's going to leak when it does that. This is one of our HD external CBVs, And we began playing with these because we are working on a stage three turbo of our own, which will go on some of these cars and there's just no way to control the boost in those higher output turbos with a compressor bypass that's built in like this. So instead of using a built-in unit like this on our stage three kits, we will simply move 
the bypass to where it's completely external. It will pick up one out here at the output and drop back in right before the input. On these cars, because they have a built-in bypass, if you want to use an external, you still can. What we've done is we've made a block off plate here. You can see it's got an O-ring there that seats down inside here and an O-ring around the outside that seals around there. And this actually just bolts in and bolts down using the stock bolts to completely disable the factory bypass in case you want to run an external bypass. We're also working on a similar plate which will be available soon which will fit the Mitsubishi turbos. So if you want to run an external bypass valve on your factory turbo, you're going to need a block off plate, either the one we have now for the Triple K, we are making them for the Mitsubishi soon. You're going to need a bypass valve and you're going to need ways to plumb this with our over the engine charge air pipe or an intake pipe with the bosses on it so that you can have this attached external to the turbocharger. Really, we've fallen in love with over the years the sound of that blow off valve going off, but that's really what we don't want to have. If you want good performance out of your car, you want to have that smooth, even boost all the way through the shift points to maintain that level of power that you're tuning for. Okay, this is our HD diverter valve. This is a full piston style does have a bypass window for those who choose to use it. This is a much stronger unit. In fact, I can't even open this thing using just my finger. But you'll see that it's a piston style. The piston goes up through here. If you push it open, you'll see that it opens on the side. And this is a much more efficient design for flow and for stability. If you want to adjust the tension on this because you're not getting the boost stability you were targeting, it is adjustable. You just loosen the lock nut. You run the stud in or out, tighten the lock nut back down to adjust the tension on the piston. Thanks to Ken for showing us those great examples of the two turbochargers on the bench. Now this is a great opportunity because I've already been working on our 2004 S60R and I was getting ready to install one of these HD diverter valves on the car already. Now this car has already got an IPD charge air pipe, it's got a turbo inlet, and we've already capped off the compressor bypass valve on the factory Triple K24 Turbo, ready to install this HD diverter valve. As you can see, I've got the upper engine brace or engine mount and brace removed off the vehicle. It's a lot easier to work with this diverter valve and get it fit in the right position with that brace off. I know that's a little bit of a hassle, but this is a big unit. It will fit back here without rubbing anything, but it's nice to have that extra working room. Now the charge air pipe and the turbo inlet has bosses, which made our silicone, to fit this diverter valve. The silicone can be trimmed to get the fitment exactly the way you want it without rubbing or hitting anything under the hood. What we're gonna do is install this on the car. I'm gonna show you what it looks like once installed with our two supporting pieces. The installation of the IPDHE diverter valve is rather simple as long as you've got the supporting products. Now I've already went ahead and trimmed the pieces ready for this to go into place. The bottom of the diverter valve gets put into the charge air pipe portion. So any pressure coming up through the piston that gets recirculated goes out this port back into the intake track pre-turbo. The vacuum nipple here at the top is conveniently located so that way you can reroute or plug in your factory vacuum line that came off of the integrated CBV on your factory turbocharger. Now I've gone ahead and rerouted the one on this car and added some additional tubing, which I'll show you how that looks once I get this completely installed. Now that we've got the IPD HD diverter valve installed with the supporting products, we're going to take this car out for a drive and fine tune the diverter valve. Now like Ken mentioned earlier, it is adjustable. So if the spring tension is too tight on the diverter valve, what you're going to run into is compressor surge. Now you're going to get some audible feedback when you close throttle or you shift. You'll get that chattering sound. You want to eliminate that by loosening the spring. Optimally, you want that spring to be as loose as possible to where you're not opening that piston under hard throttle where it would just be rerouting it back into the intake, you want that thing to be able to open as soon as possible when you cut throttle so that way it reroutes any of the boost pressure that was in the charge pipe back into the turbo inlet pre-turbo. So go for a few drives, listen to it, and then fine tune that diverter valve to where you're gonna be able to make that factory turbocharger efficient as possible. Thanks a lot for tuning in, listening to Ken and I go over the factory compressor bypass valve and IPD's other options to maximize the efficiency out of your factory turbochargers. We've got a list of applications online. If you have further questions, check out our website or feel free to give us a call anytime. Thanks for tuning in.